Hey everyone, this is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology, and today we are going to continue our exploration of this week's biggest transit, which is the combination of Mercury and the Sun moving through a square to Pluto as they move across the south node of the moon. But Mercury is also going to be Kazemi this week, and as promised, I told you guys we would take a look at Mercury's Kazemi in a separate video because it really deserves one of its own. This is not your average Mercury Kazemi for a variety of reasons. Not all Mercury Kazemis are the same, just like not all eclipses are the same. Context is everything. There's a lot of really important context with this Mercury Kazemi. And so we're going to take a look at that today. And um, as always, give you a sense of, of what you can anticipate. So before we get into today's talk, don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, if you have a second, share your comments and reflections. That really helps the channel to grow, and it's nice to create an, a community atmosphere around each uh, post. I love reading what you guys have to share as well. If you have a story to share, this is a good week for uh, a, some grabbed stories. Use the hashtag grabbed or email us your story, grabbed at nightlightastrology.com. If you have a transit, if, if you experience a transit, like maybe it's the Pluto squares this week, very powerful, a vivid story that really illustrates the astrology. Use the hashtag grabbed, tell us the transit, tell us your story concisely, or email it to us, grabbed at nightlightastrology.com. We really appreciate that. Anyway, there are two things that we are promoting today. The first is uh, my upcoming class, Ancient Astrology for the Modern Mystic. This begins on November 18th, and I'm going to take you over to the website so you can check it out. Click on the courses page, go to the first year course, scroll down, and you will learn more about it. It starts again on November 18th, and there are 30 classes on the year. And this is an immersion into ancient Hellenistic or Greek astrology. In the class, we build from the most basic foundations upward. And as we go, we also break in between major units of study and my staff leads breakout study sessions so that you can have some time to ask questions or integrate the material uh, or go a little bit deeper with questions that you may have had after studying each unit. And then we also have a forum discussion where you can ask questions and there's a staff there to answer them within 24 hours always throughout the year. There's a ton of bonus material. There's a like a workbook that we have, lots of extra reading and videos if you want. So you can really go as deep as you want to with the program. Everything is live through webinars, but they're all recorded. So if you can't attend the live webinars, you can also just take the class at your own pace. There's an optional certification exam at the end for people who are thinking of uh, going into professional practice. Uh, but a lot of people just take the course because this is your hobby. This is your spiritual, this is a part of your spiritual life and your spiritual health. And we, we really appreciate people that come from a uh, variety of different backgrounds and, and intentions for the course. So anyway, you can find the payment options at the bottom. Early Bird saves you $500 off. There's a payment plan that is also um, going to save you uh, or going to allow you to spread the payments out over the course of the program. And then the big one is tuition assistance. So we... Um, we uh, take a lot of pride in being able to offer this program to anyone who sincerely wants to study. And we don't like money to price people out. We think the energetic exchange is more important than the dollar number when it comes to people who might need a little help. We've created this program uh, so that anyone who sincerely wants to study astrology can. So if you want to study, but finances are limited, you're working within a, a tight budget, you're between jobs, whatever the case might be, Apply for the tuition assistance and see if you can work within our sliding scale or that we can find a price point that works within your budget so that we don't we want people to make an investment because we feel that the course is worth that. And we trust people to look at the price points and say, you know what, I can pay the full price. That's within my budget. And then some people say, I can't quite pay that full price. That would hurt me. And so uh, we ask you to reflect honestly on your budget and uh, we can work with you to find a tuition rate that uh, is suitable. So at any rate, uh, that's it for that. The next thing I want to promote is I want to take you to an event coming up, uh, registration for uh, 2024 Inner Circle at astrologyhub.com. Um, Astrology Hub is partnering with me this fall, and I'm doing some promotional work for them. And um, I'm happy to do so because I have worked for them and uh, collaborated with them multiple times 
in the past couple of years, and I really appreciate the work that they do and the way that they support astrologers. If you go to astrologyhub.com backslash inner circle Adam, you can get a discount uh, for if you if when you join the Astrology Hub Inner Circle. But what is the Inner Circle? Well, I was actually one of the teachers of the 2022 Inner Circle. They have new teachers every year, and um, you, you know what's what I love about their program is that they have different uh, astrologers for every month of the year that are coming in and teaching you about the transits of the month, and then leading classes. You get a mastery class of the month. Some of the mastery classes in 2024 are aspects in medical astrology with Cameron Allen, synastry and relationship charts with Wendy Stacy, solar arcs and secondary progressions with Omari Martin, astrological magic in the moon with Rachel Lang, introduction to alchemical astrology with Sheridan Semple. There are a host of good astrologers that are always part of this inner circle, many of whom are my colleagues, friends, people that I see in um, spend a minute catching up with when I'm at astrological conferences or I may attend their workshops. So they have, not every person that they have is necessarily going to be identical to the way I do astrology, right? So if you go over there, you're going to learn from people who are, it's a diverse set of backgrounds, but that's what I appreciate about them. It's a very ecumenical hub for astrological education. You're going to get uh, exposed to people from a variety of different backgrounds and approaches. And it's nice to go through the astrology of the year month by month in community, and have people helping you break down the transits and make sense of them and, and work with them spiritually. Uh, this is a real spiritually focused place. I don't know any of the astrologers, at least I haven't met all of them, but the ones that I've known who have worked for Astrology Hub have been focused on astrology as a spiritual practice. And that's what I, that's one reason why I've years of doing this and I've had hundreds of different people approach me asking if I can promote uh, their their work or their programs or whatever. And Astrology Hub is really the only one I've ever felt comfortable um, doing this kind of promotion for because I really believe that there's a high quality and high integrity um, in the programs that they offer. So anyway, check it out. Uh, go to astrologyhub.com backslash inner circle Adam and you can, um, let's see, just see what the exact, so it's a 45% off the regular price discount if you use the link that they've given me for my audience with the backslash inner circle. Adam, you can find that link in the description of this video and uh, or the, the podcast notes if you're listening to the audio version. Um, so I hope you'll enjoy that and go check it out. There's It's a great program and the inner circle will guide you through the astrology of 2024 along with great masterclasses from great astrologers. So check that out. All right. So a little uh, lengthy introduction today, but here we are getting into it at last. So we have the transits of the week, and here they are. We have Mercury going into the heart of the sun, uh, and that's coming up. You can see it crosses Thursday the 19th, and it's just separating by Friday the 20th. So Thursday into Friday of this week is the Kazemi. All right, so we have a, a, sp a pretty special signature to, to look at here. And the reason that it's so special is that we also have Mercury, as soon as it crosses over the sun uh, in the Kazemi, we have it going into a square with Pluto. So it's a very powerful sequence. Um, you can actually line it up. Let's just line it up from the perspective of today, Tuesday, October 17th. And we have, first of all, the sun crossing the south node of the moon, Mercury crossing the south node of the moon. And right as it does so, it goes into the Kazemi Thursday into Friday, at which point it then squares Pluto. And then we have Pluto squaring the sun on Saturday um, and kind of wrapping up like that. So what is so special about this sequence? Well, um, here are the things to watch for or just the details to be aware of that make this just not an average Mercury Kazemi. Mercury Kazemi, first of all, is the host of a fallen Venus. So let's back this up just a touch here and get into today. And Venus is in her fall in Virgo after having passed through an opposition to Saturn. Um, Venus is debilitated right now. Uh, so things for Venus can be just a little bit choppier um, because Venus is having to express herself in the earthy domain of Mercury, which is um, 
it requires a, a kind of um, compromise it, because there's a certain way in which Venus and Mercury are like opposites. For example, one of the ways an ancient astrological text explains, explains it is that Mercury's sign of Virgo is a bit mental. <laughs> and whereas the polar opposite sign, which is the exaltation of Venus and the fall of Mercury in Pisces is very sensual. And so Venus being sensual finds it somewhat difficult to be in a sign that can be so analytical. So um, mind and uh, almost like, yeah, mercurial. So that's a tension that Venus is dealing with right now, which doesn't make it bad or good. It just means that it's a tricky place for Venus to be, uh, you know, sort of doing her thing. But on the other hand, Mercury, who is, as we come into this talk today, combust, combust the sun under the beams of the sun and then combust. And, and that's a progression that happens for a planet as it gets closer to the sun. Mercury is in Venus's sign of Libra, which means that the two planets have mutual reception with one another. Now they don't see each other aspectually because they're in an aversion. They're in the adjacent signs that don't see each other through a traditional aspect. So they, um, what, what's going on though, is that their, their mutual reception is bringing Mercury, Mercurial and Venusian things together more harmoniously. Now that helps a great deal for a debilitated uh, Venus, and it also helps a, a certain amount for a debilitated Mercury who's combust the sun. But the point is that because Mercury is the host of Venus and Venus of Mercury, that this Kazemi marks a transition point where the condition of the two, because they are joined in mutual reception, greatly improves. The reason that it improves is that Mercury's status as it is at the heart of the sun and positively connected to Venus through mutual reception means that they go from, uh, they go from Venus goes from being hosted by a burnt up Mercury to one that is now being empowered and sort of rebirthed through the conjunction with the sun. So in other words, and, and then of course, Mercury will square Pluto. Let me get to that in a second. But the point is that there's a reset happening for Mercury, which is actually positive for Venus as well. Now I'll show you how this, how this actually builds and develops in a second. But that's the first thing you need to know this week is that this Mercury Kazemi is actually a turning point, positively speaking, for Venus as much as it is for Mercury. And that gives it a little extra pop because um, there are two planets in the sky, uh, one of them a benefic in Venus, who are going to get much more constructive in their significations after this transformation is complete. They start; they can more easily grant the more positive things that one hopes that the planets will grant. For example, if Mercury in Libra grants um, a clear sense of discernment, well, it's harder for it to grant a clear sense of discernment when it's combust and going through... Um, the rebirthing process. And once it hits that Kazemi and it starts coming out on the other side of the sun, rising as the evening star very gradually, it's gaining power. And so you could say that mercurial significations just get a little bit more um, easy. They get, they get a little bit um, better, generally speaking. Now, again, the reason that's really cool here is because that also means that Venus gets a little bit of that help too, since Venus is debilitated in Mercury's sign, but shares the mutual reception. Hope that makes sense. Anyway, the next thing that happens that suggests this kind of rebirthing moment is that right after Mercury goes through the rebirthing of the Kazemi, it hits a square to Pluto. G given that Mercury is now recovering and in this mutual reception with Venus, the Mercury square to Pluto suggests, again, a kind of Mercury-Venus rebirthing moment. To me, that could mean a lot of different things, but one of them would be that important conversations or topics coming up from the unconscious, things that aren't easy to look at but have to be looked at, and somehow the ability to do so in a way that is harmonious and easy and smoother and a little bit more productive or constructive is being granted. That doesn't mean that things won't come up that are, you know, that, that there won't be some challenging material coming up. Mercury square Pluto is often a difficult conversation, visiting darker or more challenging thoughts, um, words that are, um, that reveal deeper and more complicated intentions. Um, 
you know, moments where you have to make hard decisions, those are all Mercury Pluto dynamics, especially with Mercury and Libra, the idea of having to make deeper, harder, more intense decisions or choices between different, you know, options or, or, um, or people or values or something. So it's, it's a, it, you could say that it's a, a loaded moment for Mercury. It's like a diplomatic, it feels like a little bit of a diplomatic crisis for Mercury. But because Mercury, again, is recovering from combustion, it has the mutual reception with Venus. As it hits the, the square to Pluto, you get this feeling of purification of a moment of transformation that ultimately is kind of redeeming and uplifting. Um, we can see that this is something that it, it hits a little heavier, but it transforms us because Mercury, as it comes into all of this, will also be crossing the south node of the moon. And where we sit here on Tuesday, it's a few days out. But what you'll see is that that happens Wednesday into Thursday of this week, the 18th into 19th of October. And then the Kazemi happens the 19th into the 20th. So this idea, the sun is crossing the south node, Mercury's crossing the south node as it's sort of resetting you just get the feeling that we're about to clear out some old material or that the crystallization of, um, you, you know, an insight or, or an understanding that's crystallizing within us. And now we have a new intelligence with which to operate by a new awareness, a new insight into the inner workings of ourselves or a situation you get this idea of a penetrating, deep understanding of something that maybe has been difficult, or you get the idea of getting to the bottom of something in relationships, especially where things are messy or hard. By getting to the bottom of things and by allowing for um, grace, ease, and dip, like diplomatic care or tact to sort of guide the situation, we come out with something very positive, I think. So, I'm trying to kind of walk us through the details of this little um, astrological uh, transition that we have this week, which is quite powerful. But look at number the number four. Why do I think that this is also a positive moment for Venus? Because look at what's happening by the time that this little transition of Mercury and the Sun and the South Node and Pluto is all completed. Then by Sunday, well, really Saturday into Sunday, the 21st into the 22nd, as those transits have completed, then voila, we have, whoops, that's a square. <laughs> Let's, where's my drawing tool? Here we go. There we have Venus trining Jupiter. So Venus, right after all of this is done, Venus heads right into a trine with Jupiter. Again, you get the feeling that this is a positive transformation for Mercury, even if it's a little bit difficult. We're going through the south node and deep combustion and then Kazemi and then a square to Pluto. It has a very powerful signature of rebirth around it or of a creative power that's coming through. And it's, but it also, it has to do with looking at deeper, heavier um, patterns or, um, that, that soul's history is really coming up strongly in this passage because of the South Node uh, emphasis. But there's also insights that are crystallizing. And then, boom, right away, Venus trines Jupiter. And you get this feeling of Venus also being lifted up. It's like, what does it say? What do they say? Uh, the, the, high, the, the high tide makes all boats rise. You know that phrase? I'm getting it wrong, I think. But that's kind of what we're seeing. It's like everything is rising up through this little little uh, transformational crisis that's really compact and tight this week. And then all of a sudden, everything sort of lifts up. Mercury's improved its dignity. The sun is about to leave its fall um, in, in, in Libra. Um, the mutual reception with Venus sort of lifts Venus up and then Venus hits this trying to Jupiter. So I really like the way that all of this is shaping up. I, I feel like um, whatever's happening this week is difficult but necessary um, and we're going to feel better and we're going to feel clearer in both mind and relationship um, by the time that it's all done. And another thing is that uh, Mercury is also in the, in the heart of the sun. It's given the seal of the sun. 
which means that Mercury is being granted temporarily this week a really tremendous power, the power to speak, the power to act, the power to understand, the power to communicate. And then it's being doubly empowered by the depth and primordial sort of libidinal force of Pluto. It's like we can look at hard things. We can make tough choices. We can look at our priorities. We can rearrange the order of things and we can do so harmoniously, smoothly, balancing different uh, needs and um, uh, concerns. And if we do so like that, without being too perfectionistic, um, we're going to see that there's kind of like a very constructive, light, uh, easy energy that comes in. It's a little bit like just do this hard work and things are going to go well really quickly if you just put in a little bit of the effort this week. I think with Libra, with this heavy Libra emphasis, being the Mercury being given the seal of the sun is probably something like being given the power um, and the, and the uh, courage to make a hard choice or to um, to come to a resolution or compromise that's fair and that you can stand by. But it's a balancing or weighing of different priorities. And, um, and we have to look at where our sort of like our loyalties lie when, you know, our, our soul loyalty, what do I really care about? And how is that guiding me to make hard choices, but you'll, you're, you're being empowered when Mercury's at the heart of the sun, you're being empowered to make that kind of decision or to speak something. Um, not everyone is always, you know, classic Libran uh, truth is that not everyone's going to like what you have to say or what you're thinking or the decisions you make. Not everyone's going to be happy with it, but this is a, a week that rewards being, you know, looking at your where you stand and kind of coming to a place of inner discernment, acting from that place. Actually, it, 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 everything gets better. Everything sort of becomes um, smoother and easier. And there's really uh, a nice supportive energy that comes through if we look at the hard stuff and make the, the true inner choice. Well, um, I always feel when I get into the nitty gritty of the astrological trends, it's like, I hope I'm not losing people or I'm being clear enough because sometimes I don't feel super clear when I'm explaining it, but I hope it was clear enough to be useful. That's, that's, <laughs> that's all I can really hope for. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts and reflections on this one as the week goes on. Um, we'll, we'll be probably looking at this again, I think, from slightly different angle. I was thinking of bringing the I Ching in to take a look at this as well. We'll see. Anyway, maybe some tarot cards, something like that. It's a big week. I can't wait to uh, experience it. It should be interesting. I'll uh, see you again tomorrow.